I'm Dan Thomas, and this is the Coastal Rainbow Forum, bringing you topics of interest from the Manatee and Sarasota LGBTQ plus and progressive communities. Today we have John Harris Marr. He's the uh, public policy director for Equality Florida. So welcome, John. Thank you very much. I appreciate being on the program. Um, yeah, we're happy to have you here. So uh, uh, I understand that you're gonna you want to talk with us about hate crimes uh, against the uh, LGBTQ plus community. Indeed, uh, and I think it's helpful to start out just um, understanding what we mean when we talk about hate crimes. Um, okay, and these are really crimes that are targeting victims simply for who they are. Um, the violence isn't used for some sort of uh, compliance from the victim or necessarily for like a monetary gain. Um, it's really about targeting somebody who's of a particular uh, category. It could be the LGBTQ community, it could be race, religion, or another group. Um, and often we find that the victims are interchangeable and random. And really because of that, these crimes terrorize the victim's entire community. Uh -huh. um, so having hate crimes law is a really important way that our government takes a position on opposing these forms of bias and prejudice. Okay. Well, I mean, do you want to uh, describe to our listeners, uh, you know, what those types of uh, things could be? Because I think sometimes when people hear hate crime, you know, they always think of it as something violent, you know, um, but from what I understand, it can be a, a wide range of things. Sure. Um, it can really take uh, a number of forms and there really, there has to be an underlying crime. And then the operative fact again, is that you have the bias or prejudice that is the motivating factor for this crime. So, um, typically we do think about, uh, more violent circumstances, but it can arise in a number of occasions. And while we certainly know that there is a high prevalence of hate crimes, one of the, um, common issues that we see for law enforcement is that many of these instances go unreported. So we mm -hmm. have some occasional high profile hate crimes, um, uh, like the one that happened uh, shortly at the conclusion of Miami Beach Pride, um, I believe it was in 2018, 2017, 2018, uh, where you had a uh, same-sex couple that was accosted and uh, beaten by uh, a group of four individuals that were hurling you know, gay slurs as they were mm -hmm. uh, attacking these two individuals and also attacking um, another bystander who tried to come to their aid. So that case certainly got a lot of media attention, um, but we know that there are a lot of cases that go unreported and they're not all treated with the severity that we know like that case did had or um, cases that have really gained national attention like the case of Matthew Shepard that really led uh, to adding sexual orientation and gender identity uh, and others who federal hate crimes law in 2009. Wow. So what does, uh, what does Equality Florida uh, do to assist in uh, dealing with hate crimes? So a lot of our action uh, occurs on the public policy front, though it is also worth mm -hmm. um, noting that we do have a tool on our website for reporting any form of discrimination. Um, and that mm -hmm. would certainly include uh, hate crimes and hate violence that are perpetuated on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity. Uh, but for my work in particular, in the state legislature, uh, we are part of the Florida Hate Crime Coalition. And this is a group uh, established in 2016. And its mission is to secure amendments to Florida's existing hate crime law so that it better protects all Floridians. Uh, there are more than 80 members of that organization. Um, the Alliance, the Anti-Defamation League is really a great leader in that space, um, but members 
besides Equality Florida, include LGBTQ organizations like Jasmine out of Orlando, the Drew Project, um, and then really a wide variety of other advocacy organizations and local governments. You've got the Tampa Chief of Police and the Tampa Office of Human Rights that are signed on, the League of Women Voters, the Interfaith Council of Central Florida, Disability Rights Florida, the Florida Alliance of Planned Parenthood. I mean, just an incredible uh, coalition of organizations that recognize the importance of addressing hate crimes and that we really need some changes to Florida's existing law to make sure that, again, our full community in Florida can be protected um, under these existing structures. So, well, you mentioned uh, uh, legislation and, uh, you know, updating laws. What, uh, is there anything specific that, you know, our, our listeners might like to hear about? Absolutely. Uh, so, as I mentioned, Florida does have an existing hate crimes law, and it uh-huh. enumerates a number of the sort of categories of biases um, that we recognize as potential bases for hate crimes. So those are things you might think of like uh, race or religion. Um, fortunately, sexual orientation actually already is covered in the existing hate crimes law. It's one of very few places uh, in statute that sexual orientation is addressed. But our existing law doesn't recognize gender or gender identity as bases for hate crimes. So um, those are some of the amendments that we're working on. Others include expanding the definition around physical disability. Um, While disability is recognized as a potential category of bias for hate crimes, right now the definition in Florida statute sets a really high bar around disability and it um, basically requires incapacitation uh, in connection with a mental condition, so Mm -hmm. not something that is purely physical. So we'd like, um, as the coalition, we're working to add gender, add gender identity, and bring the definition of physical disability into alignment um, with the Florida Civil Rights Act. So that, again, it's more encompassing and uh, protects those that should be protected under the law. There are also two other changes. Um, One would add what we call associated with crimes. So for example, earlier I mentioned the example of a hate crime that occurred after Miami Beach Pride. Right. And in that scenario, you had the couple that was attacked as well as a bystander that came to their aid and was attacked. Um, Right now, the bystander uh, attack couldn't be charged as a hate crime um, because we don't address associated with crimes. But if you think about a case where there may be, you know, three friends at a bar, two of which happen to be in the LGBTQ community and just an ally, um, it might be that the ally gets harassed and accosted um, either because they're assumed to be or just because they are affiliated with the two other LGBTQ individuals. But right now, Florida's hate crime law wouldn't uh, extend to that association. Wow, that's really interesting to know. I've actually, <laughs> I've actually been the victim of that, um, being with some of my uh, LGBTQ friends, and mm-hmm. you know, and had had insults hurled, and it's just, uh, it's amazing what people can uh, can do. Absolutely, so, and that sort of you know indiscriminate violence and hatred is something that should still be addressed by law. Mm -hmm. Uh, The other sort of last area for the proposed amendments to Florida's existing hate crime law are around what we call mixed motive hate crimes. Um, So those are crimes that may be not um, solely oriented around a prejudice or bias, but uh, are exacerbated by or include a prejudice or bias. So this could be something where Um, two individuals get involved uh, in a fender bender while driving, it leads to an altercation. And in that altercation, uh, you know, anti-LGBTQ slurs are thrown out that clearly show that level of bias. Um, Mm -hmm. But currently that sort of mixed motive crime, again, wouldn't be covered under state law. Wow. Wow. Uh, That's very interesting. Um, you know, one would think that uh, it would be covered. Yeah. So 
the bill for these changes was initially introduced um, in the House and the Senate in 2017, and mm-hmm. there wasn't any hearing on the legislation. And then in 2018, uh, it did actually pass out of the Senate Criminal Justice Committee, mm-hmm. um, and unfortunately didn't progress further. Last session, uh, we didn't see action on the bill, but it will be reintroduced this session. Um, and so we're hopeful to see more action on it. Um, bills have begun to be filed for the 2020 session already. Uh, the session officially begins in January, but committee weeks when work on bills can officially begin uh, will start, I believe it's the second or third week of September. So um, that's coming up quickly and we're excited to see this legislation filed um, among some other legislation that's already in the works um, from important things like addressing anti-LGBTQ discrimination in schools accepting, uh, private schools accepting vouchers that are state funded uh, to perhaps less important bills uh, that would, you know, establish coconut patties as the official state candy. So uh, (laughs) they they certainly deal with a range of things in the legislature. Some are a little more substantive than others, Um, but we're really hoping to see much more action on the hate crimes law and you know as uh, equality for his public policy director i'm based in tallahassee and shortly before session last year we actually saw um, an incidence of gun violence and hate motivated violence um, right here literally blocks away from the capitol where a shooter entered a yoga studio um, and killed two women among injuring others uh, before killing himself and we know from some of his writings online that um, it was an individual with some very sick ideas and a lot of those were tied up in gender um, and that it very much appeared to be a gender motivated crime. Now, obviously in that case, uh, since the perpetrator killed himself, there was no prosecution there. Um, but it really brought home the fact that, you know, we see so much of this hate motivated, motivated violence um, still on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah, and it seems it seems to be getting worse. I mean, uh, I don't know, you know, what numbers you have, but just for my personal opinion, it, it's it, it seems like um, in the past two and a half years or so, it seems to have gotten a lot worse. You know. Yeah, it, uh, I mean, I think we're certainly hearing a lot of inflammatory rhetoric from mm-hmm. the highest levels of power. Um, that are really um, aggravating and instigating a lot of hate violence um, and normalizing it in a way that we haven't seen in a long time. So we know uh, that there has been this increase in hate violence year over year. And I I don't think it's a stretch to assume that that plays some factor in it. Um, I did mention before that a real challenge for law enforcement is underreporting. And we know that Um, underreporting occurs for a lot of reasons, and in some cases, uh, because of shame and stigma. Um, You know, individuals who may be LGBTQ that uh, don't feel comfortable acknowledging that um, they suffered violence on that basis. Uh, And we hear from law enforcement, really, I would say sincere requests that uh, individuals do report so that they can address these issues. because having those sort of statistics and that information on uh, hate crimes reporting is so important. I mean, first, it allows law enforcement officers to you know, assess the severity and the prevalence of these sort of bias motivated crimes. It also helps negate false claims um, that these hate crimes either are non-existent.